Kicks 96, your home for today's best country and the legends. That is Rufus Thomas, Bearcat. It's Big Farley in the morning, 835. And a special, special guest on the phone as we celebrate what would have been the 100th birthday of the legendary Sam Phillips. We've got his biographer, uh, Peter Garalnik, on the line. Uh, thank you so much for being on the show this morning. Well, it's great, great to be back. Um, so... I w- one question I wanted to ask you was, uh, how did you wind up uh, kind of getting the, the, the job to write the biography? Well, first I have to say that Sam was expecting to be here for this birthday, and he oh. should have been. And he had enough spirit and enough life and enough life force and enough dynamic, you know, push that if anybody were around to celebrate his 100th, it should, be, it should have been Sam. But I met Sam originally... Uh, through Knox and Jerry way back in 79, I think. And then I continued to know him uh, uh, from that point on until his death. And, uh, you know, we became, we became friends. Uh, eventually he asked me if I'd, write, if I'd write the book, although at that point he was envisioning writing it with me. But, uh, but no, Sam, Sam was a patient man. I mean, he said to me one time, he says, you know, now, my son Knox, now let me tell you something. My son Knox. Now, you know, my son Knox, he liked you. He loved you the minute he met you. And then there was a long pause, he said. But I didn't. That was after about 15 years. But then we got to be good friends. <laughs> but we stayed in touch. And through, through Knox and through Jerry, he was a huge help to me. He was very reluctant. He wasn't interested in studying history. He was interested in making history. But when I was working on my Elvis biography, starting in the late 80s, he became a huge participant. He was totally sold on it. And we spent a lot of time together, and we continue to spend time together. So that's how the biography came about. Well, and his legacy is one that even before I worked for Big River Broadcasting, I was familiar with Sun Studios, and and I was always amazed at the fact that you know the the the, the artists that that were there. You know, you think about the ridiculous. I mean, you've got. Not only did was he recording Helen Wolf or Elvis Presley and Jerry Lee Lewis and Carl Perkins and Johnny Cash, I mean, the effect on not just the landscape of American music, but I mean across the globe, the effect is absolutely amazing. And what a revolutionary you know Sam was. Well, he was a revolutionary both in in terms of music and in terms of race, and he was a visionary because he saw all this happening in his very first interviews for the commercial appeal in the press seminar back in 1951 when he had a huge hit with Ike Turner's Rocket 88. He spoke about the impact of the music and how this music, he believed Rocket 88 would be an across-the-board, you know, uh, uh, across-all-categories pop hit. And uh, that was his vision of rock and roll years before it ever came about. And uh, Rocket 88 sold over 100,000 copies, so you can see it sold a lot of copies to white listeners under the counter, but it never did make the pop charts. But let me tell you something. You mentioned landscape. The last time, uh, you know, I was at, uh, you know, at the station was with Sam, and he was so proud of that station. And I don't know if you were around then, but the thing was, he paid attention to every single detail, including the plantings. And he pointed out every single detail, and he knew every single person. But, I mean, he loved radio. He absolutely loved radio. It's where he started, and it's where he ended up, and just gave all his attention to making the stations, you know, the best they could be. But, really, there was no detail, no detail that escaped his attention, including the planters. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, you know... And also, you know, you talk about, you know, the the revolutionary that he was, even when it comes to radio, he was, you know, his thinking was always ahead. It was never where we are. It's where things are going. Because he was already taught, you know, thinking about like satellite radio and, and you know, things through computers before it was ever really a, a, a concept. He was already thinking about how radio was going to evolve over the years and, and was amazingly correct about how it was going to happen. Well, you know, everything he ever did, he studied, which is a funny kind of a thing. It could be illness, it could be radio, it could be anything, and he studied it carefully. He was just a brilliant, brilliant man. But the other thing was that in the end, all that mattered to him was feel. So having done all his studying, then he let himself go on the field. And if something was really great, I mean, you mentioned some of those early records, when something was really great, he said, that's a rolling stone. And that was his highest praise for Jerry Lee Lewis or Elvis or Howlin' Wolf or Walter Horton or whoever. And uh, he, uh, 
But I should mention one thing. He was so proud of his hometown. He always said, you know, from the time I first met him, he said, the real story is in Florence. And to the end, you know, to the end of his life, he said, I am a proud Florentine. And when, you know, I visited Florence with him, you know, we just went around to all the points of interest, you know, to where Coffee High School used to be, to the football field where the marching band was practicing, uh, to um, uh, what's the Trowbridges, you know, oh, yeah. which he just loved. And, uh, he, but in every respect, he saw the whole story coming, you know, starting in Florence, and really uh, Florence, he said, was the center point, which I, I kept thinking... Come on, Sam. You must be, you know, Memphis. Everybody knows it's Memphis, but he insisted <laughs> it was Florence. <laughs> All right, so we're, we're going to talk more uh, with um, with Sam Phillips biographer uh, Peter Garalnik in in just a bit. Uh, we got some Carly Pierce on the way. Got Jason Aldean up next on Kicks ninety six. 